I'd like to read a brief passage from the work of St. Francis de Sales, Treatise on the Love of God, Volume 2, Book 9, Chapter 11. I'm always uh, struck by the fact uh, what a contrast these texts, these texts offer with our age and our present sensibility and still speak with such relevance. Concerning the perplexity of a heart that loves without knowing whether it pleases its beloved. After the musician of whom I have spoken became deaf, he had no pleasure in singing except sometimes seeing his prince listen attentively to it and take pleasure in it. Happy is the heart that loves God with no other pleasure but that it takes in pleasing God. What purer and more perfect pleasure can we ever have than that we take in God's pleasure? Yet, strictly speaking, this pleasure in pleasing God is not divine love, but only its fruit, which can be separated from it like citron from citron tree. As I have said, our musician always sang without taking any pleasure in his singing, since his deafness prevented it. Moreover, he often sang without having even the pleasure of pleasing the prince, for after having ordered him to sing, the prince would retire or go out hunting, taking neither leisure to heal him, nor the pleasure of hearing him. O oh God, as long as I see your sweet face, which testifies to me that you are pleased with the song raised by my love, how, how consoled am I? Is any pleasure equal to the pleasure of truly pleasing our God? But when you turn your eyes away from me, and I no longer perceive the sweet favour of your complacence in my song, then, O oh true God, in what great torment is my soul. But it does not cease to love you faithfully and to sing continually its hymn of delection, not for any pleasure that it finds therein, for it has none at all, but it sings for the pure love of your holy will. It is really striking what uh, sensitivity uh, of love is revealed in it. It's a real conversation between, between two persons. It's a tangible love. Um, it's a very subtle observation on the nature of love, what happens between our soul and God. Um, These are, uh, these are real conversations. This shows the reality uh, of two persons. This shows the value uh, and the preciousness of having a friendship with someone, uh, with God, uh, here. And I just uh, ponder that uh, what a great loss it is when this sensitivity is lost when we forgot this uh, this type of conversation with God and this intimacy with uh, with each other. I also have uh, the idea also occurred to me that when these uh, classic texts were born, when these reflections took place at the time. Our culture had a really great chance of enhancing its ability to love and to shape the world. Uh, our culture uh, had a real opportunity to, to overcome 
the harshness of human nature, not for a flourishing period of a spiritual renewal, uh, like in the 16th, 16th century, in the, uh, in the Baroque or Conto Reformation period, but uh, for a longer run, because human nature, the nature of our culture is about, uh, sadly, it's about violence, uh, wars, inattentiveness and mistrust. Uh, if we forget these classics and this sensitivity disappears from our heart, it's like when a species die out and disappears from the ecosystem. It's an irreplaceable loss. And uh, this, uh, this highlights our responsibility as Christians or readers of past, past classics that uh, we are given the task to save God or save this culture of love that intimacy is healing that this subtlety of conversing with each other and God and with reality itself this type of uh, delicate discernment is really nourishing our culture and can bring about that change which prevents us to forget our humanity and humaneness. And we can see what's going on in the world, constant and more aggressive wars. So it is really true that only the culture of love and reflection like this saves us.